Now, in Central Africa, a giant slab of carbon-rich peat discovered by a team of British and Congolese scientists is under threat from oil companies. The carbon must be kept in the ground to avoid boosting climate change. But some plots have already been sold for oil exploration and the Republic of the Congo wants to develop the area for agriculture unless, they say, richer nations deliver more financial assistance. Our Africa correspondent Andrew Harding has the story. In the vast forests of Central Africa, a group of scientists are hacking their way towards a remarkable discovery. This formidable team has spent years tracing the outlines of something huge and hidden and precious. Just uh, entering the coordinates of a point that's about three kilometres away. It's gruelling work in near impenetrable swamps full of snakes and crocodiles. But the scientists, using handheld drills, have discovered a fantastically large expanse of peat. So we want as many samples as possible from as many different locations. And this rotting vegetation is important because it traps carbon. We estimate that there's around 30 billion tonnes of carbon stored in the peatlands of the Cuvette Central in the Congo Basin. And that's equivalent to around 20 years of US fossil fuel emissions, so a huge amount of carbon. The scientists here have discovered something extraordinary in these swamps. A slab of peat that's two metres deep and as large as England. It's the biggest of its kind anywhere in the world and that makes it incredibly important when it comes to climate change. If all this carbon is released in, into the atmosphere, it can, or we can say, accelerate the global change. Climate change. Climate change. And do you think that is a realistic threat? I think it's a threat, yeah. The Congo peatlands have been quietly trapping and storing carbon dioxide for thousands of years, but humans could change all that fast. These vast peatlands are already under threat. That's because all around the Congo peat basin, developers, farmers, growing populations are looking for ways to make money out of this land. We found these farmers tapping palm trees for palm wine. But the process kills the trees and the peat below. So how to save all this? Congo's peatlands are the world's lungs, but rich nations, the biggest polluters, should pay for that service, should pay to protect them. Why should we stay poor so you can breed? A reasonable question, but outside help has been slow to reach these isolated forests. Is it your sense that the international community has shown commitment, money, to sort this? I think not yet, not enough money. I think, I think there's, these ecosystems aren't yet valued as they should be at an international level. The scientists have done their work. Now the race is on to prevent these precious peatlands from going up in smoke. Andrew Harding, BBC News in the Republic of Congo.